All right, so in this first video, let's review the sampling methods and such. Um, I think I'll just go down the A, B, C, D part of it and then look up and see which one it was. So A, Mr. Burton wants to see how RHS students feel about the proposed schedule. So he surveys his five classes. Which sampling method does that sound like? That's going to be convenience. Right, I just surveyed my classes because they're, they're in the room. So that's going to be convenience. All right, so that should be number three. Um, now, B, Mr. Huff wants to see if students are for or against a new schedule. So he assigns each advisement class a number, uses a number generator to choose 10 classes to survey. If he picks your class, then every student takes a survey. Which method uh, of sampling is that? That's your cluster sampling. He's picking whole classes at a time, so that's cluster. Okay. Um, stop me if you have any questions on any of these. Um, a sample is formed by choosing every fifth customer who goes through checkout. Which sampling method is that? That's going to be your systematic. All right, systematic is the one where it's like every fifth person, every tenth person, or whatever. Um, let's see, D, Mr. Huff wants to see if students are for or against a new schedule. So he puts a sign on a table at the entrance of the cafeteria saying, come fill out a survey, tell us if you like the new schedule. Which method is that? That's voluntary, just like if you posted it on a website or sent out a, ma uh, a mailing. All of that would be voluntary, so D goes there. The homecoming committee wants to find out which theme students prefer, so they randomly choose 25 freshmen, 25 sophomores, 25 juniors, and 25 seniors. Which sampling method is that? That's your stratified random, all right? As soon as you hear those categories, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, they're broken up by category, that's how you know that it's stratified. Right, Christian? Keep those eyes open, buddy. You might as well unplug so you're not like watching a video or anything. You too, buddy. Um, so there was that. F, Mr. Huff wants to see if teachers are for or against a new schedule. So he assigns each teacher a number and uses a random number generator to choose 25 teachers to survey. All right, Christian, which, um, which method is that? That's your simple random. That's just simple random. So F goes here. OK. A survey asks, do you find classical music boring, as most people do? Or do you like it? What? Yeah, that's an example of biased wording of a question. Um, so G goes here. OK. And then do you prefer a study hall? or hour-long lunches? Yeah, that would be an unbiased way of asking a question. So what was that, H? So H goes here. Any questions on those um, sampling methods? OK. Now, number nine, does the following situation describe an experiment or an observational study? This is what we didn't uh, get to yesterday, so let me just say ahead of time. Um, it's going to be an experiment if the researcher controls who gets what treatment. If the researcher decides, so let me see what this is about. So in the problem that we didn't get to yesterday, there were mice. And um, some mice got this uh, vitamin, like a little mouse vitamin, and then other mice didn't. And uh, because the researcher decided which mice get the vitamin and which mice don't get the vitamin, then that was an experiment. Okay, so if the researcher controls who gets what treatment, it's, a, it's an experiment. Now, if the subjects of the, uh, the study decide for themselves, if they have uh, chosen for themselves what category they fall into, 
then that's an observational study. For example, um, imagine I was uh, going to do a study on headaches, uh, how glass, wearing glasses versus wearing contact lenses relate to having headaches. Uh, if I was going to do that, and I, um, I asked you guys, okay, well, I can see which ones of you are wearing glasses, and I could ask you, okay, all right, who's wearing contacts? And then I could ask you about how often you get headaches. Now, did I decide who's going to wear contacts and who's going to wear glasses, or were you already doing it? Yeah, because you were already wearing your glasses or your contacts or whatever you do, and then my control group would be the people that don't have contacts or glasses. How many headaches do you get? Um, that would be an observational study, because as a researcher, I just recorded information on the two groups, but I didn't decide who was in the glasses group and who was in the contacts group. You guys were already doing it, and I just recorded the info. That's what makes an observational study. So if the researcher decides who gets what, it's an experiment. If the researcher doesn't decide, if the subjects themselves decide um, which category they're in, then it's an observational study. So now, let's look at this. Mr. Burton wants to see whether students perform better with a TI-84 graphing calculator or a TI-30XS multi-view. Before the test, he randomly assigned some students the TI-84 and other students the TI-30. He later compares the performance of the TI-84 students to that of the TI-30 students. So um, what do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you think that this is an experiment I just described. Give me a quick thumbs down if that sounds like an observational study. Show me your vote real quick. Experiment or observational study. Okay, put them down. Your thumbs show me that you are, you understand this, okay? Experiment. Now tell me why, what's the critical piece of information that makes it jump in, Tristan? It shows you getting for it. Right, as a researcher, I chose who got which calculator. That's what made it an experiment. So on a quiz, um, be careful to not only say your answer, but justify. And your justification would be because um, the researcher, you know, because Mr. Burton chose who got which calculator. Um, obviously, the other one's probably going to wind up being observational study, because I probably did, probably did one of each. But let's look at it closely and see, see why. Um, Mr. Burton wants to see whether doing your homework helps students perform better on tests. He randomly picks 20 students who did less than 50% of their homework, and he randomly chooses 20 students who did more than 90% of their homework, and he compares between the two groups how they performed on the last test. Why is this an observational study and not an experiment? Yeah, did, did Mr. Burton choose? Okay, you guys are gonna do homework, you guys are gonna not do homework. Did I choose? No. The students in this story chose for themselves whether or not they were gonna do their homework, and then they got the consequences of that. Um, as it happened. Um, so that, that's what makes that an observational study. The researcher didn't choose who got which treatment. All right, any questions on that? All right, you people sitting here in the classroom with me don't care, but 